Okay, All we're in the home right. stretch. We in there, Where the so fuck are we? Out, so, are... let's go through this real quick. First of all, it's just like, ah, I'm saying Which is great, of course he is. Um, also, he's wing zero this time, so here's your Gundam reference. Good, good job, everybody. Um, so, we went from Palace Road right, to the ranks full of boulders, which self-destructed. You no, I'm not done yet. Do it doesn't need self destruction. So we spires. go from the road to the boulder ramps to right, red again blocks, again. which then I explodes, but it doesn't. Except it turns into a hallway? Now yeah, then, so in the cutscene, it's a hallway, which maybe is falling apart, but it's not really made clear. Then from there, we get a teleportation room with more kind of just like halls and stuff, moving platforms, then we're outside. Then we're in a soul asylum, and now we're on an elevator that's going down, presumably, to our uh, cave or something. Who, who knows? So, this is Sigma's first form. It's mostly irritating because if he's not attacking you, you can't attack him. And if you're attacking him, he'll keep his guard up. It's kind of like the Mets. So it's not like a new mechanic or anything overly different. It's just aggravating. Also, he looks kind of dumb now that I'm looking at his arm aiming that gun. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like this Sigma fight, though, because A, for one thing, the music is actually pretty decent. B, the stage is a little bit dynamic, even if it doesn't make sense. I like the fact that you can tell you're on a falling platform or, ne or an elevator or something. The whole screen is rumbling. It suits how much movement there is going on, and there's, granted, haphazard kind of random platform placements, but there's still other stuff for you to interact with versus like Sigma's body or just a square room. So I don't mind that. And I like this Sigma for the most part because it's something that's actually pretty distinct. And, you know, you kind of need that because you're moving into three-dimensional space, lots of aiming and targeting and stuff like that. But it doesn't feel like a rehash of a previous fight. And in my opinion, some of the, especially the PlayStation ones, got really homogenous. It was like, here's a smaller body that's powerful and has lots of kind of screen clearing attacks of some kind or another, and then a giant body of some kind that has nothing to do. Yeah, like the body doesn't really do that much, and then it has like really strong attacks and it's a bullet sponge. Four being kind of the exception, the swapping between two heads mechanic was admittedly pretty unique, and one of the few ones that has three forms, not counting Belgar, their next one, because that's not actually a signal. Uh, plus, they'll also go into the background. Uh, his guns do different things, and that's neat. I don't think, because he does the beat cannon yet. Yes. Okay, so he also has that. Oh, he's about to do it. So. He also has that. Fucking retarded ass giganto beat cannon. Yeah, like, it's not the cleanest looking fight, but as far as Sigma fights go, this one actually isn't that bad. So, I guess at least X7's fight roster has that. I just think the arena is fucking stupid. Contextual. Like, yeah, like. Like, this would be really cool if it were led into an irrational way and it just wasn't. So, I think it's less that it's stupid and more that it's a waste. Would be a better way to put it. But hey, so... We've gotten through that. We've reached the bottom floor of yeah, the so elevator. The elevator is clearly going uh, to a black hole in the sky in space. Underground somewhere. Yeah, so, don't worry about it. This, so, I'm gonna immediately open with this. This is a series first. This boss has a multi-layered health bar, which will actually become fairly standard from here on. Last signal head is Alright, and this one I think is a little bit more obvious, so that's fucking terrifying! The worst part about this fight isn't any of Sigma's attacks, although his dash punch is admittedly pretty damaging. I can tank it a little better than I usually do in my runs, because I've got all of the health power-ups this time, but it's still really scary, so if you're going to dodge any attack, make it that one. The reason I hate that attack over the damage is the fact that you have to dodge it if you don't want to take the damage. And this is a fixed camera error. You can see that you can't actually rotate the camera yourself. Which is ridiculous, because you're on floating platforms over a bottomless pit, they're not a uniform size or shape, and you can fall between them, and you have to go down them on an arc. You have full 3D movement, you're not on a moving spline or anything like that, so you can go straight towards Sigma right now off the edge if you want to. So, because the camera is doing whatever it wants, and you have such poor visibility over everything, especially with the camera tilting up and down, because that part you don't have any control over, it's just the rotation. 
you can fall off of these platforms so easily. Certainly your face is done. Yeah, so the halfway or halfway-ish mark right now is you knock off his pony helmet, which makes his whole head disappear because nothing about this game can be cleaner. Uh, and so we're now at a point where I want him to keep doing this attack because he is just going to sit there and take damage the longer he does this. And I can take that damage. Like, I don't care about that. So, this is the area where what we talked about way at the start of the Fortress Runs is a really big deal. The fact that if you game over, you have to do all of it over again, means that I now don't have any way to refill my sub-tanks if I die. It's just not a thing I can do. Well, you don't fucking know how some things really work in this game. Yeah, so the game over could just refill them. Yeah, that might be a thing. But based on normal conventions, it's a, a fairly safe assumption that if I fall into that pit, the sub tanks that I've already used are gone. And it's easy to fall into the pit. So the overarching strategy for this Sigma battle is to just hope that he stays close enough for you to wail on. And also, it's worth noting, he doesn't have a weakness weapon, it's just a button. So, your range limitation, that's it. Like, there's no way for you to use some other method to hit him when he's far away like that. You just have to deal with it. I mean, to be fair, even if he had a weakness weapon in this fucking game... It wouldn't game. be worth it. Why don't you kill him with the Giga Attack? So, that's game. That's our 100% run of Mega Man X7. There's still credits and cutscenes and everything. Also, check this out! You don't even get a different victory theme. It's just like, I beat the level! Woo! Oh. Bye, guys. So, we get our second animated cutscene. And this, way. this is hilarious. Let's just follow along with all this. This is this is where the game should end. There shouldn't be anything after this scene. Okay, <laughs> 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 <Hey>, bye, Axel. <laughs> also, I hate that this is a cool Sigma design. This should have been his second form or his first form. I promise you. Like, just think about that. Like, you beat him, and instead of going into a bigger body, he comes out in, like, a desperate smaller body where he's quicker and has, like, electric attacks. She just could have been. So, Red's back, and uh, he's he's just not exploded because nothing ever actually exploded. Give me your power. And now Sigma's going to uh, tentacle him. And then... Ah! Then we're in the tower. Okay, so this pisses me off. Like, more than the actual instance of pissing me off, because that whole event pisses Actually, me off. But when okay? he gets his gun out, <laughs> he transforms. Cool, like, his whole body flashes white. I'm almost 100% sure it's not just the gun. So he transforms, right, shoots Sigma, gets thrown backwards from that, from, I guess, the force of his pea shooter, because hey, it's pea shooter. Except it's not the pea shooter shooting straight up, yeah. and the force knocked him backwards, wherein he is red again. This is okay, because we have this. Yeah, so this is important. We have that whole bullshit where no, Axel didn't save the day. Fuck you, game, just fuck off. I don't have the patience for this. So, this is the final summary. Like, this is what actually happened with Axel. Axel destroyed the mechanoloid that was blocking the ship's hatch, securing an escape route for the crew. Just let it run. This case did cause 16 casualties, however. In addition, Axel has shown up to assist in a total of 14 incidents involving Mavericks. I love that read, by the way. Mavericks! But in any case, so the whole point of this section is supposed to be selling, like, look, we know he's new and he's caused trouble, but he has the world's best intentions at heart, which is decent. This is how X responds. Do you think we could make Axel a hunter based on his good deeds? No way! Don't you get it? <laughs> he must not be rewarded for such methods. This so, is why this is my favorite game in the series. Yeah, and so this is the thing, is he's actually arguing the correct point. It's like, yes, Axel does have the best intentions of the world at heart. X understands that. That's how X acts himself. But he doesn't understand the consequences of, like, sloppy action and everything like that. He's got 16 bastards. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, that kind of thing can happen. Like, Sigma's initial attack that X failed to stop probably killed hundreds of people because of the missile silos that go off if you go off of the irregular hunter uh, cannon that way. But in this instance, it really is just like, I'm a good 
guy. Look at how cool I am. And X had to make like a really big deal decision against someone who was originally his commanding officer. Like the stakes no, are much no, it's different. It's like Axel's the guy. It's like, man, I have a gun. There's a shooter in the school. Exactly. All rush in. Axel is the good guy with the gun scenario, where it's like he's trying to be good. And you can kind of sympathize with it, but he's bad at it, and it's dangerous. And, and X's response to that is like, well, he's got good ideals, let's make him a good guy. He's like, no, he's sloppy and dangerous, and we shouldn't be dealing with that. At the very least, he should be getting, like, trained properly. But what Cygnus is suggesting is like, oh, well, he helped save the day, he's on your guys' team now. Just immediately, it's like, no, no, that's not how this fucking works. And that's how the game ends. Like, I think we were talking over it a little bit, but X initially says, no, we can't reward him for such sloppy behavior. And Cygnus basically responds with, well, ideals aren't always the way to go. We have to maybe still consider. Just think about it, X. And X still says no. And then it goes to the credits. So the whole ending of this is X was right the whole time. The conflict was completely pointless. Axel's methods were dangerous and unprofessional, and none of it needed to happen. And when people were trying to reward Axel for being like, uh, you participated award winner, X is like, that's fucking bad. We can't do that. What's great is, like, you get a different ending depending on who you kill Sigma with. In for Ax I'm, so for zeros, it's just a normal zero seals and Yeah, it's just yeah. called prompting. That one's far for the course, but... In Axel's right. ending, X still says, fuck no, you can't join us. I love it. Yeah, so... Even in Axel's storyline, he's still considered dangerous. And now, granted, and I don't think it's any spoiler at this point, that gets retconned in X8. Axel is still around. But he's actually portrayed in a much more interesting yeah. way, and the story overall is better. It even includes him better, too. Like, it makes him part of the plot line, but in a way that makes sense. And I'm really, really looking forward to analyzing that with you, especially after this, because this game from start to finish is nonsense. And it doesn't fit in with any of the games prior, nor does it fit in with its direct sequel. So you can really just cut X7 out entirely, play one through six, and then cut to eight, you know, Game Boy games if you want, just obviously play whichever ones are fun, but seven doesn't fit in in any way. Seven doesn't fit at all. I just like that they're trying to give context to whatever the fuck Axel did early on, but you never really see that mission, so yeah. you don't. Nothing is actually important. The yeah. only stuff you get is that cutscene with the mobsters, and that's just an introduction to, like, well, you can transform? Whoa! And then it's just like, you, yeah. So this game has... God fucking This game has it. no rewards at the end of it. There is a new game plus, but the new game plus just makes it so that, as far as I'm aware, uh, okay. just makes it so that X is playable from the start. After the intro cuts. Yeah, or after intro the stage, intro stage, you the, can play as The X. intro stage is always the same. I don't know if it changes any... Does it change any of the parts or anything like that? The rescues? I, I, so it's possible that maybe you start with those, which great. Uh, and when we were originally going to be doing this, a lot of people said, like, okay, we'll do the... Use the New Game Plus. I'm like, no. No, no. <laughs> this is important. Like, if you wanted to go out and play this game... This is what you'd have to do to play as Yeah, if you bought the game, we just did it for you. Like, that is fresh right. out of the box X7, and it's, it's just unenjoyable from start to finish. It's fun to make fun of. you want to play a 3D Mega Man game, go play Legends. For the love of God, play Legends. Do not touch this piece of shit. Or X8. There's better yeah, 3D. Full 3D. Full but anyway, that's X7... We're sorry. Uh, thank you very much for watching along with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, X8, I think, will kind of heal all wounds. X8, in my opinion, like I've said multiple times, is a return to form, and I think it's one of the ones that I've been looking the most forward to covering. X8 is definitely top four for me. So, so look forward to that. It'll be out soon. Soon. I don't know how rushed I am right now. This is for future me to worry about. <laughs> the consequences will appear later. But... Thank you for watching. X7's bad! But why? I tried so hard! Mm -hmm.
Now you listen well. Being a hunter is not all about defeating the obvious enemies. If you don't understand this, I can't allow you to become a hunter. I don't understand. I, I just did what I thought was right and fought those who did wrong. That won't bring true peace. It will only create new resentments. But I only followed your lead. I did what you did. But what I did was wrong. I just took far too long to realize that. Outbreak in the West Sector. I'll take care of it. I can handle this, X. I'll get you to make me into a hunter yet. Well, wait, Axel. Why don't you let him do what he wants this time? No. If I don't stop him now, he'll make the same mistakes we did. X? Well, where am I? Eliminate, eliminate the Mavericks, the Mavericks. Eliminate, eliminate the Mavericks. X. The Mavericks. What happened, X? <laughs> Just a dream. Zero? Zero, do you read? We've located the runaway Maverick Grogs at point F5113. I want you to head there immediately. I hear you, Alia. I must have fallen asleep. I'm on my way. I hope that was really just a dream. <laughs>